So FIFA Street has always been a game uh, that has been kind of resonated well with fans. It's been a game we've always kind of wanted to make, but as part of a sort of a more global EA strategy, we really started focusing on our core titles uh, several years back. Uh, our CEO kind of, kind of mandated that all the different groups start to really focus on their core titles and make them as strong as possible from a quality perspective, from a sales perspective. So what that allowed us to do on the FIFA group in particular is really make a great FIFA game. Uh, a really great FIFA engine, uh, which then this year now allows us to really go out and start making another football game, a street football game, using that engine as a backbone. So, you know, our focus on being a quality FIFA product has really now helped us create a quality street football product. Yeah, so when we set out to make FIFA Street, we really wanted to make an authentic street football game. Uh, and what we quickly found out is that when you make an authentic street football game, it's inherently Arcadia. I mean, you have walls, so the ball stays in play, it's a bit more fast, it's a lot more about the skill and style. Uh, so what we realized is by being able to pull off uh, a quality, authentic street football game, we were going to be able to create an experience that was different from what people would get on FIFA, but still have a lot of fun because it was true to what they see when they're looking at YouTube videos, if they go to different competitions, they see the same type of things from FIFA Street that they're going to see in the real world. So to be able to strike a balance uh, for us really meant, well, let's just deliver the authenticity side of street football, and then the game itself will kind of naturally gravitate to be a little bit more arcadey and differentiate itself from other football games. Yeah, so one of the great things and one of the reasons we do the, call this a, a reboot of FIFA Street is because this is the first time that the FIFA development team has been used to make FIFA Street. It's also the first time that it's been built off of a FIFA gameplay engine. So those two things uh, really set us apart from the previous FIFA Street titles. We had a team that really understood what it took to connect with the consumers in the way uh, of how to deliver a quality football experience uh, and an engine that's been spent years being perfected to be able to deliver just that. There's development directors, producers and designers. All of them came into play to be able to make FIFA Street. So again, what we really want to message with, uh, you know, don't forget about the last FIFA Street game, but when you consider this FIFA Street, with our message of coming out as an authentic street football game, it's different than the message we came out with previously. And also because, as I say, it's the first game being built by the FIFA development team on the FIFA engine. This is the first game that's really going to feel like football as soon as you start playing the game. Whether it's the momentum of players, the locomotion, uh, foot planting, the way the ball moves, it's not attached to your foot, it's actually loose, uh, which creates a lot of variability in the gameplay because you now have to worry about your skill and timing of when you do things. All of those things that kind of set us apart from the way the previous FIFA Streets were made is why I kind of consider this the reboot, why we all consider this a reboot at, up at EA, and why you can, in some respects, forget what you had seen before, because you're starting with strong football fundamentals and you're creating an authentic street football experience on top of that. Two things that were kind of lacking from the previous FIFA Street games. So what the game does have in terms of licenses, uh, we were able to get the top clubs within the Premier League, uh, so in England, in France, Italy, Germany, Spain, we have the MLS, we have 20 national clubs and plus some street footballer clubs. So while we may not have this full breadth of what FIFA has, we do have quite a significant number of clubs and we had a, a, our licensing team really help us in terms of ensuring that we could get those clubs. We also wanted to focus on players that maybe resonated a bit better with uh, what FIFA Street really is, so the skill, the style, um, the speed, the physicality to, in some respects too. So uh, on each squad there's 13 players and we have a, a large team, data collection team from around the world helped pick those players for, this, for the different squads. So uh, we won't be seeing DLC uh, because we wanted to really focus on the top clubs, the top players, uh, and then really make this game not necessarily about those guys but the team that you build. For us, the most exciting part of this game, uh, while you do get to play with the Arsenal versus Chelsea in different locations, it's not real, it's not authentic street football. Whereas the team you create, which is going to be you, uh, probably players created by your friends, who then you can add to your team. So it's you and your friends that can just join maybe like a local league, basically that's the premise, and work your way up to kind of become in, in aspirational the street football champions of the world. Uh, that's where the fun, in my opinion, in a lot of gamers' opinions, is where the fun is going to come from this game. In, in order to get all the moves in our game, and there's over 50 kind of what we call, I guess, base moves in the game, uh, we brought motion, uh, actual street football talent into our motion, motion capture studios in Vancouver, and they recorded all the moves. So everything you see in the game is real. It's something that someone has been able to pull off, as amazing as it may seem at times. Uh, these are all 
actual captured moves from real street footballers from around the world, uh, which is fantastic. It really helps us deliver that authentic authenticity message. Um, what's also great is that those moves, uh, the, the base set of moves that we have in the game, the ones that you can just do by either gesture based on the analogs or not, they can be combined together. So you can start doing moves, a chain of moves together that create almost like what we call combos or super moves. Uh, and so the number of real moves in the game is, is almost uncountable because they really come from what fans are able to find. And we've already seen in videos being uploaded to YouTube since the demo's been launched about different types of combos that people have been able to put together, some really incredible stuff. Uh, and you know, you see the comments and really, you know, this really captures the essence of street football to us. You go to YouTube and if you're not looking for FIFA Street, you're looking to street football in general, you'll see a lot of videos, you'll see so many views with comments about just how cool it is. Uh, and we wanted to create that same feeling within FIFA Street. So by being able to do the real moves in the game, putting them together in a way that really embarrasses people and looks extremely cool, and then sharing that with the community and having people talk about it, we, we've, in a sense, captured uh, within the game what street football is in real life. So, obviously, for FIFA Street, you know, one of the major differences you'll notice um, outside of sort of the gameplay is, is, the, is the environments. And, and with the environments is the walls, obviously. This is not something you're going to see in FIFA. So for us, you know, we were able to start with a great FIFA engine, which was which is awesome and helped us in, in many respects with the locomotion and being able to feel like football. But players had no idea how to react to walls. Goalkeepers had no idea how to react to walls or even to different size nets or different size penalty boxes. So there's a lot of work that we had to do uh, to be able to make sure that uh, players moved correctly, they weren't running into the walls unintelligently, they were using the walls in a way either to shield or to pass off of, uh, and the goalkeepers were turning around when the ball would go off the wall, so they were in a position to either catch it off the rebound or understand at least where the ball was about to end up. Uh, so all of these things we had to kind of do just at a very basic level. Uh, that took a lot of work because you know we had to rework an engine that had been many, many years in development. But because of the way that the engine had been developed, um, very, very well architectured by our engineering team up at EA, uh, it, was, it wasn't as difficult as it, as it could have been. So a lot of that was, was great. We were able to build in, uh, around that. And then when you think of the environments themselves, so not only is it the fact that there's walls, but the different types of walls. So we have fence, for example, versus a brick wall versus a wooden board. Um, they'll have different physics also. So a fence has a lot more give, the ball will bounce less uh, versus a, a brick wall. Even on the surfaces, so you'll have a concrete surface versus a sort of a basketball hardwood surface. Uh, versus turf and they'll have different rolling friction on all of those too. So there, there are subtle differences but they do affect the way you might decide to play in those different environments uh, and it was important to us to be able to create that variety because not just have environments as sort of a window dressing that you can just go here, 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 here and they have no real impact other than they look cool but to also have an impact to the gameplay and have a purpose for why you might want to choose one versus the other or to, under, to learn the subtleties of the different environments when you're playing in them.